This episode is sponsored by our friends at Green Chef, the first certified organic meal kit company. Green Chef brings the flavors of fall to you with fresh seasonal organic produce in every box, plus premium proteins like organic eggs, sustainably sourced seafood, and antibiotic and hormone-free chicken. Even better, you don't have to guess what to make with your farm fresh items. With Green Chef's easy to follow recipes and pre-measured and prepped ingredients, you'll be serving up a restaurant worthy meal in no time. With so many delicious fruits and veggies ripe and in season, fall is the perfect time to dig into squash, cranberries, Brussels sprouts, green beans, maple, and pumpkin. Ooh, pumpkin, Deborah. You'll find these whole foods and more in chef-crafted recipes designed to celebrate the season. I made their Turkish spiced chicken tacos with lemon honey crema, shug slaw, and pistachios last weekend. It was so amazing that I literally ran out to the balcony and yelled at my neighbor Greg, who was watering his plants across the street. I screamed at the top of my lungs about how great it tasted. And now, well, Greg is super into Shugslaw and even put a long review of the Green Chef recipe on the front page of the neighborhood newsletter. So what are you waiting for? Be like Greg and go to greenchef.com slash bald50 and use code bald50 for 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next two months. Again, that's code bald50 at greenchef.com slash bald50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Hi, divas. As you know, Tritzi is on break. So I'm solo here on the podcast to tell you that we are bringing you more Bald and the Beautiful live shows this fall. That's right. We're going to be in Baltimore, Providence, Columbus, and a whole bunch of other East Coast cities that I don't have on the script in front of me. But all tickets and info will be at TrixieandKatyaLive.com. So get your panties in check for the best damn podcast you've ever seen. <laughs> Wait, I have to stop you right there because I have this is the thing that I do that I hate. I have to introduce you first oh, before great, we start great, talking. Great, great. Um, welcome back to another riveting episode of Bald and Beautiful. I am bald. He's beautiful. Please welcome Joel Kim Booster. Woo! Hello. So you're gay and bipolar. I'm gay and bipolar. <laughs> Because uh, I needed another thing. I'm Asian. I'm gay. I'm adopted. Uh, I'm bipolar. Yeah, what else? I'm physically dyslexic. It's Wait, great. really? Yeah. Um, what, oh, physically? Physically dyslexic. So it is a real thing. It means I have no natural um, instinct for left and right. So I am constantly still doing this. Get out. Um, like all the time. Dancing, choreo, it's a nightmare for me. Well, like, I can't. I still can't get stage right or stage left yeah, oh I, I don't know what that is i still I mean, don't know what it is try try not knowing left and right already and then being asked to like put yourself in like you know like, like it's just not take possible. two steps to stage left and i'm like Mm-mm. just point Mm-mm. just point Mm-mm. i still Mm-mm. don't know what it is what no is and it? then i what hate is it, it? I, I what hate is it, it? stage so stage we're, we're, so okay so stage left is if you were on the stage looking at the audience looking at the audience it's to your left that's yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, as it as the director it's to my right 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 right, right. right, right. so Correct. they're making it because they know that actors are stupid <laughs> yes, they yes. know that actors are stupid and they cannot and then downstage and upstage is tough but that i know yeah. because it used to be like uh so downstage yeah. is towards the, towards audience, the audience upstage yes. so upstage stage right is going back into the left okay no, no, and to the right wow i don't know i don't know <laughs> and i i'll never have to know yeah you know who cares um <laughs> i will never yeah i don't think i'll ever be put in a position where i have to do that would you um, be in a broadway would you be in a broadway show as a singer um, as a lead so male here's singer the thing like my entire career has been one long con to get stunt cast in a musical which, like i want to be famous enough i little shot and can I tell you, I actually think, I think we can talk about this. It's in the early stages of, of right now we're looking for a venue. It's happening in January though. It's happening. Shea Coulee and I went to high school together. Get out. Yes. We were in my senior year, her junior year. We were in Little Shop of Horrors together. I was, uh, I was a uh, Seymour. She was Audrey too. Get out of here. The, the, the plant. The plant. Okay. And I, for years we have been joking about like, oh, we should do like a charity remount. But this is like, Pre drag race, yeah. we were we had this idea, and then post drag race, we were sort of like t- toying with it, and then like right pre pandemic, Bob the drag queen was like, I want to produce that, Get out of here. um, and now he's much too busy to do it. Oh. But I was talking to this producer at O'Mary, um, who produced O'Mary, and he was like, I want to do something with you. He was like, Do you have anything quick and dirty that we could do? And I was like, Quick and dirty, quick and dirty. <laughs> 
I was like, you want something quick, quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. You want something quick and dirty. <laughs> like, let me tell you this plan that I have. And it's me and Shay reprising our roles. And it was so funny because at the same time I was texting Shay, I was like, I cannot wait to see what the drag version of Audrey 2 is. I was like, I it's good. I was like, Poison Ivy, but pop star. And at the same time, Shay texted me, Poison Ivy through the Rihanna lens. Oh, and I was like, wow. that is that's cunty. so perfect. That's cunty. Like, it's going to be great. And we're going to cast it with a lot of like drag queens and mm. queer performers. And I don't know if you know who Murray Hill is. Um, I in do. New York. Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, like yes, we're really trying to get him mm-hmm. um, to play the dad. And, um, you know, it's early stages of planning, but it is happening. Who's going to be in Audrey? January. That's the question. That's the question. And it's like, do we get a cis girl? Do we get a drag queen? Do we, you know, do we throw Marsha, Marsha, Marsha a bone? Do we Anya throw Taylor a Joy? Bone? Oh, yes. Yes. Anya, I, Anya Taylor Anya Joy. Anya Taylor Joy. Or, Actually, kind of might slay. That's the problem with her. Right? Slay? That's the problem with her. She always slays. She always does slay. She Except, always I will say, as Peach. As the Mario movie. Oh, I didn't see The Mario that. movie. <laughs> Why did that have to happen? Terrible. Why does Cash and grab. Then Sonic the Hedgehog? If you want to watch the Mario movie, just watch your nephew play Mario. It is a much more enjoyable experience Fuck. than watching the Mario movie. And I will say this: Did you ever see the Mario movie in the '90s, the live-action Mario movie? No. It's impossible to find. My boyfriend had to find it on German Netflix. We used a <laughs> VPN to find it. Okay. And here's the thing that I will say: It is a historic flop. Like it okay. is a. It is not a great movie. I will give it that. But is the, it watchable? It's definitely watchable. It's oh, definitely watchable. Okay. I would I would recommend watching it okay. even because here's the thing that's interesting about it is I would much rather have an adaptation that takes a big swing uh-huh. and like really changes the world or really brings something to the world that the director and the writers are bringing rather than the Mario movie we got, which is like, Oh, isn't like, look at the reference that we're, you know, Oh, I get that reference. Right. Oh yeah. That's from Donkey Kong. Right, this right, is, right. You know, like I, I, I fucking hated the Mario movie and yes, I'm an adult man. So like, it's not for me, you know, yeah, to but, love, uh, but, but the, I, the, I don't think any movie needs to be like, I think if you're going to make a movie, you might as well just make it really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like the logical. Like, no, I mean, it especially seems for like, children's it movies seems like too. The, like that's, you have to make children's movies watchable for adults. For adults too. Yeah. And they use, I used to think, I do think that used to happen a lot more than it's happening now. Because you know what I'm fucking sick of? What? With Disney right now, mm. I am so fucking sick of the lack of villains in Disney movies. Because, bitch, every fucking villain in every major Disney movie now is like your self esteem. You know, like, oh, or it's like, they it's get, like, right. it's like, it's truly like they cannot give us an Ursula anymore. They can't they just can't, deliver on pure evil. They can't evil. give us Jafar. They don't, they're too afraid to like give us a real villain. It's always like your lack of belief in yourself. You know, <laughs> it's like, it's the real villain. killer. It's like, yeah. fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> like, give us the singing and dancing villains that are fierce that we root, <laughs> that we end up as little gay children rooting for over the ingenue. I, I agree. And get, you know, there's a film that I just watched where there is no, I don't think there's any better uh, example of a villain that is so villainous and so sadistic. Have you ever seen the Terrifier movies? Okay. <laughs> I only know about this movie because of you. Because of you. And I won't. I'm talking. I'm going to, this, this, this is the part where I'm going to talk at you for a little bit. Please go ahead. <laughs> because. Um. Oh God! The people listening to this are gonna probably just shut this off right now. Um. The I, the third one. There's been three Terrifier movies. And this is the clown. The clown. This yeah, is yeah, art. Yeah, the yeah, clown. Yeah. The first one is very bad. The second one is even worse. And the the third was fantastic. And this is it's a sadistic clown who. It's torture porn. It, is it, what it's, you're, it's you're selling. Um. Yeah. It's uh. I I don't say it's. Uh, it's tor- saw, uh, hostile and saw are torture porn. Um, human centipede for me was where I that, really had to. Because yeah. here's my thing: if I wanted to watch a movie where two young girls scream in agony for ninety minutes, 
then yeah. you know I'd watch the Gilmore Girls. Okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I don't need yeah. I don't need human yeah. fucking centipede for that. Yeah, it's um, you know I I I don't for some reason I don't group this film in the. Because there's a plot, or why? There's definitely a plot. Well, I'm gonna. Oh, God, this is a spoiler, I suppose. But babe, no <laughs> one's seeing these movies. No one is seeing these movies. I'm gonna. I'm You've gonna, been selling okay. these movies for truly literal years on this very podcast. No, I'm a, a listener. No, I'm a fan. With, I have never once heard you talk about this movie and and said. Put it on the queue, babe. <laughs> I'm gonna. This is a okay. Major spoiler alert right now. I saw a sneak peek of this film. It's not out yet, but it probably will be by the time this airs. Anyways, there. It is. It is very much torture porn. I would say it's a gore. It's a. It, it, it's like a gore. A feast of gore. Okay. Feast of gore. It's a gore glut. A uh, gluttony of mm -hmm, gore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Torture porn is like. There's an art to that. There is an well, art torture to porn that. is so realistic. Yeah, I think that the, it is about the girls screaming. Yeah, it's in about pain. the. It's like the, it's a. There's a realism to torture porn where it really, really, like seriously takes. It takes itself very seriously, trying to depict very ultra realistic mm -hmm. violence. Mm -hmm. Right, like yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, there's yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a really squirmy kind of like but this is so over this the is top schlocky. that like this yeah. is like yeah, yeah, yeah. buckets of blood and it's spewing. kind of the art is in like how they did it yeah like yeah, yeah. i mean it's like so for example um like a a, a couple a man and a woman are t having a taking a shot they're fucking in the shower okay and art the clown comes in with a chainsaw not as easy as the movies <laughs> no, make it seem no no stand-up sex yeah. too it's very challenging and then um you know, the clown busts through with the chainsaw and the chainsaw got like they, you know, he hacks the girl up into several pieces and then he sticks the chainsaw up the guy's ass. And it's like, none of this is implied. It's all very, very, mm -hmm. it's, 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 right re there. it's right yeah, there. It's right there. Up the ass. And then you see the dick and balls get sawed off and it's just like endless in your face, crazy. And the packed audience cheered afterwards <laughs> he cheered you know afterwards what, though? that <laughs> is i get that though because i would see that movie in a theater in oh, a way magic. that i would not watch alone with my partner like i just like because there is a catharsis when you're watching it with a group yeah where you are just like yeah. i i could see myself getting excited This episode is sponsored by our friends at Green Chef, the first certified organic meal kit company. Green Chef brings the flavors of fall to you with fresh seasonal organic produce in every box, plus premium proteins like organic eggs, sustainably sourced seafood, and antibiotic and hormone-free chicken. Even better, you don't have to guess what to make with your farm fresh items. With Green Chef's easy to follow recipes and pre-measured and prepped ingredients, you'll be serving up a restaurant-worthy meal in no time. Green Chef is celebrating the most wonderful time of the year when the air becomes crisp and we don our light jackets that are only useful for nine days out of every year. As we start to see witches, ghosts, and ghouls appear on our neighbors' lawns, why not celebrate the arrival of fall with some seasonal fall dishes from Green Chef? With so many delicious fruits and veggies ripe and in season, fall is the perfect time to dig into squash, cranberries, brussels sprouts, green beans, maple, and pumpkin. Ooh, pumpkin, Deborah. <laughs> You'll find these whole foods and more in chef-crafted recipes designed to celebrate the season. Embrace the cozy vibes and dig into no-fuss recipes designed to make eating clean a decision that feels good and tastes even better. Plus, every week features rotating options to suit a variety of lifestyles, including the science-backed Mediterranean diet, keto, plant-based, gluten-free, calorie-smart, and more. Make clean eating manageable with 15 delicious, quick and easy meals to choose from every week, each ready in 25 minutes or less. I love saving time in the kitchen with premium ingredients that arrive prepped, many even come pre-chopped, and ready to cook like pre-measured sauces, spices, and dressings. I made their Turkish spiced chicken tacos with lemon honey crema, shug slaw, and pistachios last weekend. It was so amazing that I literally ran out to the balcony and yelled at my neighbor Greg who was watering his plants across the street. I screamed at the top of my lungs about how great it tasted. I expected him to be annoyed, but he proceeded to ask me what shug slaw was. I replied, well, it's a delicious spiced green sauce originating from Yemen, made with herbs, lemon, garlic, olive oil, chilies, and spices. It's orgasmic. And now, well, 
Greg is super into Shugslaw and even put a long review of the Green Chef recipe on the front page of the Neighborhood Newsletter. So what are you waiting for? Be like Greg and go to greenchef.com slash bald50 and use code bald50 for 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next two months. Again, that's code bald50 at greenchef.com slash bald50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next two months. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. You can't enter your neighborhood supermarket without seeing 450 items that are pumpkin spice flavored. In case the pumpkin spice sausage wasn't enough of a clue, I'll break the news to you that spooky season is upon us. It's that special time of year when we pop some buttery popcorn, invite that hot barista from the coffee shop over, and watch the vintage Laserdisc copy of Mommy Dearest. Barbara, please, please, Barbara. And why do we look forward to the scene with Faye Dunaway running at her daughter with the wire hanger? It's because we all love to be scared. Whether it's for a campy 80s film about how insane Joan Crawford was, or one of the new horror movies about creating a hot clone of yourself before your arms fall off, the act of being scared is ridiculously fun. But what if our fears don't involve the ghost of Joan Crawford haunting the set and terrorizing Faye Dunaway? What if those fears are real and not quite as fun as watching campy horror while snuggling under a blanket with your significant other? Therapy can be a wonderful tool for facing your fears and finding ways to overcome them. Because sometimes the scariest thing is not facing our fears and consequently being held back from living your best life. Therapy can help you face your fears in a healthy manner and eventually work to overcome them. I used to harbor a very strong fear of clowns who had beards. The clown part was fine and the beard part was fine, but when the two are combined, it's the stuff of nightmares. Well, after years of therapy, I can now safely visit my uncle Douglas in Medford, who became a full-time birthday party clown after retiring. His stage name is Chuckleberry Finn, and if he decides to put on his costume at Thanksgiving, complete with red beard, I no longer find myself picking up the steaming hot turkey and throwing it at him in self-defense. All because of therapy. I love BetterHelp because you can schedule sessions whenever and wherever it's most convenient. It's designed to work with your crazy life no matter how busy you are. BetterHelp never interferes with my burgeoning baked potato delivery service, which is great because I don't have time to drive to a doctor's office. I'm too busy making sure my customers get their baked potatoes hot and fresh. Listen, people, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Overcome your fears with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash bald today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. Have you seen the substance yet? All right. Oh my God. Are you, are you motherfucker? Are you listen, motherfucker? <laughs> Have I seen the fucking substance? <laughs> I is feel like, water wet? I feel like we is can't talk. I, I feel like we, because it's so new, I want people to see it. I really do think that like, we can't get into too many of the specifics. No, no, no. We but, will, we got to do spoiler spoiler alert on this one because I don't I wouldn't want my experience spoiled of it because when I yes, the yeah. trailer came out many months ago and I I heard a, 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 some buzz from Can about it and I was looking forward to this film a long mm-hmm. for a long time mm-hmm. maybe even a year or something. Yeah. It was like I it, the the trailer came out and I was like oh this looks interesting and I could not wait to watch it and when I I saw it in a packed theater probably. No, by definitely, definitely the most wonderful movie going experience I've ever had. Really? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was magical. Then I saw it again. Um, and then I watched her I other don't two. Know. I don't know if I could see it again. Did you Did you hate it? No, I, I really liked it. I really liked it. I do. I am not like a gore person, but it's utilized in such a way that like... It's it's almost commenting on it's like I hate to be that person, but it's almost commenting on gore itself. Um, and like and and I think that the movie, the met like the the sort of POV of the movie is so strong because it isn't just a killer clown like eviscerating people with uh-huh. a chainsaw. There right, right. is like yeah. a point to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I a mean, way. It's- in the same way that like honestly, I don't put Saw in the same category as Hostile or. Um, some of those other movies either. Some of the Saw movies I do think touch on uh, like the narrative of those movies 
keeps it afloat in a way that other torture porn movies don't. Yeah, like I just rewatched Saw 10, which um, has a, I, I've not seen all of them. I know some of them are much worse than others, but Saw 10 has a very clear, is a very clear revenge plot. Right. Like the guy gets, he gets, he gets got, he gets swindled, mm -hmm. and then he gets revenge on all these people who like try to whatever. And it's very systematic and it's like, and it's like, you know, it's very clear cut. And it's very satisfying and it makes sense. And there's a, there's a clear, like there are clear villains and there's a clear victim, even though he's mm -hmm. the, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it's actually very watchable. It's disgusting. Yes. It's yes. absolutely disgusting, but it's, um, yeah, I don't know. The, the substance, I, I mean, to me, yeah, I mean, there's, and also but there is a, there's an irony. There's like a kind of an elephant in the room. I think I've been because I've been watching like gobbling up every little bit of press that all the actors and the director have been doing. It's like, well, she took the substance. <laughs> you know no, I mean? yes, you know, like, exactly. And I no hate. Like I, exactly. I don't. I don't mean to be disrespectful at all, but no. there is a met, there's like a there's like a un, kind of unspoken like meta qual, the quality to it that I'm like uh, they're not. I'm directly trying to think of like a similar example where like it would be like. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be like if Alec Baldwin did a movie where he like shot Sh someone accidentally, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and then had to do press about it, <laughs> like, and everyone sitting there like. like mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. But you know, it really it got me. Um, I, I'm like a, I have become a huge fan of Margaret Qualley, mm -hmm. um, Andy McDowell's daughter. Well, first of all, what do you Wait, think? Wait, I did not know that oh, she yeah. was Andy's daughter. Oh, yeah. Andy McDonald's daughter. What do you think? <laughs> Andy, 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 I didn't know she was Andy's, Andy's daughter. daughter. Yeah. What do you, um, any thoughts about Nepo babies? Um, do you listen, care? Does it matter? I think that um, there's an obvious advantage that a lot of Nepo babies have. But the thing is, it's like, if we're going to go after Nepo babies, then I think we have to go after any sort of privileged kid sure. that starts with an because like the thing is is like when i was coming up like i was coming up there are comedians that i know and love and who i think are brilliant and deserve the success that they had but the fact is is that while i was busy working 50 hours a week at a day job because i had to have health insurance and pay my student loans and my rent and then going to do open mics after that until 2 a.m i had friends who didn't have to work or could work as a dog walker or could work as, you know, a temp or, or, yeah. or a nanny or something yeah, like yeah. that because they didn't need money to live. Right. And it, it, it is, it, you just have to acknowledge. And, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with acknowledging that, I'm sorry, I worked a little bit harder than Margaret Qualley. I don't know if that's crazy to say, say like that. clip that, clip that. <laughs> That's, that. that's our title. <laughs> that's, our, that's our episode title. <laughs> Fuck that Nepo no, bitch. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, I, I, I do feel though, it, there is like a certain element too though where you got to show up if you're going to be a Nepo baby. Also, you just have to be good. You just, you just you have, have to be to good. Be good. Yeah. Every, but the problem is in this business, this is what I tell everybody who like wants to break in and is like, oh, but I'm so talented and I, I don't know why it's struggling. And it's like, babe, everyone's talented in this town. Yeah. Every single person everybody's is hot. Everybody's young. Everybody's so, like, talented. Use what you got to get in the door. Like, yeah. and if it happens to be because your Judd Apatow is your dad, then yeah. God bless you. you yeah. Know? Or but just be good. Yeah, you, you got to be good. And then, um, I mean, there also is on the flip side. I do appreciate like the romanticism of like a Hollywood dynasty, like Tippi Hedren, or wait, who is it? So it's Melanie Griffith, uh, Ingr uh, Ingrid. No, okay, Tippi. Well, it's Dakota Melanie. Like, and who, in, uh, in, uh, Ingrid Bergman? No, no, Tibby Hedren. Tibby Hedren. Tibby Hedren. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Ingrid Bergman, Isabella Rossellini? Something like that. Control room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Type faster. <laughs> yeah. There's, I love Hard it when there's to, like three. Yeah, I love yeah, yeah. it when there's a three. Well, the Clooney's famously too. Um, Dynasty. Hollywood Dynasty. Who? Rosemary Clooney. What, it was his like great aunt, I think. Oh, um, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Hollywood. 
I, Hollywood Dynasty. Um, there's a couple of really good examples. I think there's some great examples. I think Maya Hawke is usually pretty good in what I see her in. I oh. think Sosie Bacon is great. Yes, I was just going to say, uh, she's great. She yeah. looks exactly like Kira Cedric mm-hmm. and Kevin Bacon. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. She's great. Although, I got to... This is so funny. I saw Smile twice. I, I'm ashamed of it. Um, but there is a scene in that horror movie where her she's a therapist and her boyfriend says to her i googled mental illness <laughs> to her she is a licensed oh therapist my God. and her boyfriend's because boyfriend is like like babe you're listen you're crazy because i googled mental illness i and you're showing signs of it I so I auditioned for Smile Two several you times. Did not. I actually got I got pretty close. But part of the audition for Smile Two is you just had to do the smile. Oh like my god! Like you had god. to do a take where you'd like look up, <laughs> and I I can't do it now. I can't do it now. It's too embarrassing. It's so cool. If I can find the clip, it's if so cool. I can find the clip, I will email it to you, Please. and you can just like insert Please. like a little bit of my version of it's, the smile. I can, oh. it, it was so embarrassing, and I was on oh. I was on vacation. I was like in a house in Ohio with like twelve of my friends okay. upstairs screaming like in front of my laptop like try <laughs> you have fucking to, you smile have to too. try i'm gonna try i'm gonna try i'm gonna try really hard i'm gonna, I'm gonna try how, how do i do it? it's so it is really corny it is it's really, really corny, corny. it's really corny like, <laughs> i don't know how to do, like, <laughs> I feel like it's like and i think it, you have part of it it's, is it's like not, hiding it's not, it's not this it's a it has to be like but yeah, it, no, it's I, not it can't be like the, no, it's like it, it's, it's got you, you gotta hide your bottom a little bit too. I <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. Mine is so bad. I cannot do it. I cannot. It's no, such a I mean, stupid. That's, I'm sure that's why I didn't get the part. They yeah, said it, we can't. Yeah, we it, can't. With he's that. too beautiful. Yeah, nobody would ever believe. No. Um, the oh god, it's it's such a it's, oh my god. I don't know. I love that movie so much. Well, it's, you know what? Bad. And this is the thing. Like my next movie after like. I'm going to write a movie, honestly, like if I ever have a hope of writing a movie that will end up in theaters and actually make money, it's going <laughs> to, it's going to be a mid budget horror movie. Okay. Because, but why mid budget? Because the thing is, is look at smile, Megan, uh, uh, Megan, the, the one with her head, malignant. malignant, none of these movies, these movies were made for cheap. And uh, for two reasons, the reason I like this I, this model is A, they get to do goofy shit. Like Malignant was goofy as fuck. That, and B, yeah. they're the only movies casting unknown people in the leads. Yeah, that's true. They're like not star heavy movies. Yeah. They really aren't. Yeah, that's, it, it's, it is true. I mean, I... So the, the director of The Substance, Coralie Farja, has her first film is called Revenge. And I watched it yesterday for the second time. I heard it's time. great. I heard it's, it's amazing. great. It's great. I don't know any people. I've never heard of any, but Matilda Lutz, I think, mm-hmm. is the, the lead. Never seen her in anything. Don't know who she is. Um, it's so bloody. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's really cunty. You know who I'm pissed I didn't get called in for? Who? In The Substance? That gay fucking nurse at the beginning. You would have killed that. Are you like, kidding me? You'd be a perfect candidate. I'd love to see the <laughs> Just one more, one more test. Hold on. One more. Just. Uh, mm-hmm. I have something that can. It's you. long, isn't it? <laughs> Seven days. <laughs> that would have been me. <laughs> I would have yes. been perfect for that guy. <gasps> uh, oh my god. Uh. This episode is brought to you by Via, the hemp company with their amazing lines of both THC and THC-free products. Mama, spooky month is here. She's spicy, she's alluring, she's purring, but don't let the crisp air snatch your summer zest for life. Engage in more tantalizing adventures and embrace the natural power of cannabis this fall with Via. Deborah, the possibilities are endless. Need better sleep? There's a gummy for that. Want to get absolutely filthy, dirty, downright disgustingly hot with your partner in the bedroom? There's a gummy for that. Just want to unwind after a long day and drag? Vaya has you covered. If you're a high-functioning queen like Tammy Brown or want to puff and then go for a seven-mile jog like Trixie, Vaya's premium federally legal cannabis products are your perfect companion. 
Farmed and crafted with care in the U.S. and trusted by over half a million customers, Vaya has a product for everyone with THC and THC-free products to encourage your comfort. Vaya is well known for their premium THCA flower, award-winning THC and THC-free gummies and vapes, soothing topicals, and calming drops, all crafted with the highest quality cannabis sourced from trusted, independently owned American farms. And the best part, Vaya legally ships to nearly all states in the U.S. in discreet packaging directly to your door with a worry-free guarantee. No medical card required. So if you're 21 plus, check out our link to Vaya's website in our description for 15% off. I'm a massive fan of their THC-free Zen sleep gummies. After I've seen the substance at my local theater for the 18th time, I need a little help relaxing and getting some much-needed beauty sleep. With these magical gummies, I was able to stop thinking about Demi Moore's commanding performance and fall asleep easily, all thanks to Vaya. If you're into THC or you're more into the THC-free products like me, you need to try Vaya. If you're 21 plus, check out the link to Vaya in our description and use the code BALD to receive 15% off. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. This fall, enhance your everyday with Vaya. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. It is said that life without passion is like peanut butter without jelly. It's pretty great on its own, sure, but together, it's bliss. Everyone in life is passionate about something. Some people fix cars. Some people make pottery alongside the ghost of their boyfriend. Others leave their big job in the city to move back home and save their parents' mulled apple cider company while simultaneously falling for the middle school dork who is now a hunky apple cider press repairman. For me, I've always been deeply passionate about competitive dog grooming. After years of practice, I can now turn any dog, large or small, into one of the golden girls. Want your Bichon Frise to look exactly like Blanche Devereaux? I can do it with my eyes closed. So I ask you this, what is your passion? And don't you think that the entire world needs to learn about it from your very own website? Now is the time to sign up for an account at Squarespace. What is Squarespace, you may be asking yourself. Squarespace is the industry-leading tool where you can make websites for pretty much anything, including how to properly turn a Shih Tzu's tail into that of a mermaid for a nautical-themed dog grooming competition. And if you want to launch your website with an entire line of merch depicting chow chows as pandas, boom, Squarespace has your back. Squarespace has a massive portfolio of product features for whatever website you're looking to launch. And after you've launched, let's say you need help with marketing. Well, Squarespace has so many features to help drive sales and engage your audience with creative email campaigns that you'll be making a ton of money and flying to compete in the 2025 Italian Dog Grooming Championships in Milan. And if you have some extra knowledge that you think you can turn into some extra cash, say some detailed information about how to deal with excessively angry Pomeranians, Squarespace can help you post online courses. That's right. Squarespace has all of the tools you need to create and sell your very own course and even set it up to be a one-time payment and or subscription. You can even make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools. The site can accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, and offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay and Clearpay. So go ahead and check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ball to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, that's squarespace.com slash ball to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This episode is brought to you by Chime. Back when I was a youth fighting for survival in the back alleys of Boston, I had to make money any way I could. To get extra money, I took a job working the docks with my neighbor who was a longshoreman. After a long day in the hot Massachusetts sun unloading crates of tomatoes, fireworks, and chewing gum, I made my way to the small trailer next to the docks and punched a clock, thereby starting an agonizing two-week period where I'd have to wait for that paycheck. That was 1897. These days, no one punches a clock and no one should have to wait for a paycheck. Life moves so fast that we hardly have the time to properly wax our posteriors. So why in the year 2024 are we still operating within the concept of a pay cycle? When you're in control of your money, you can reach your financial goals easier and still splurge once in a while when the occasion calls for it. With a Chime checking account, you get access to products like MyPay, which lets you get up to $500 of your pay between paydays with no credit check, no interest, and no mandatory fees. At Chime.com slash bald, you can learn more about MyPay, and you can finally liberate yourself from the mental prison of pay cycles. I know it comes as a great shock, but I haven't always been great with my financial management. I've done some unspeakable things for a little extra cash, including working retail. I sure wish I had my pay as an option when I was folding khakis for a living. Chime lets you get up to $500 of your pay before payday with no interest, no credit check, and no mandatory fees with my pay. But Chime isn't just about choosing your own payday. 
You can join millions of Chime members who are working on financial progress. Get covered on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with SpotMe and no monthly maintenance fees. Plus, Chime doesn't charge overdraft fees or interest for using SpotMe. And the best part? Chime has over 50,000 fee-free ATMs. Take more control of your finances and stop waiting for payday. Open your account in minutes at chime.com slash bald. That's chime.com slash bald. Chime. Feels like progress. Banking services provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. Deposits are FDIC insured through the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. Up to applicable limits. My pay line of credit provided by the Bancorp Bank N.A. or Stride Bank N.A. My pay eligibility requirements apply. My pay credit limits range $20 to $500. $2 fee to get funds instantly. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Fees apply at out-of-network ATMs. I mean, would you take the substance? I mean, not, how old are you, 30? I'm pushing 40. Okay. Thank you very much. Where are you pushing it towards? Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're away, pushing it off the away, cliff. <laughs> yeah. Away. 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 Wait, what exactly? 38? Um, 30. No, I, I'm turning 37 soon. So listen, hey, <laughs> that's late 30s. Yes, late 30s. Pushing 40 is 39, which is not a real age. Okay. Okay. Like, did you know what I mean? I 39 always, is I like always, a not I always thought age. once you were in your late 30s, you were pushing 40 because you're like getting closer to it. I think pushing 40 is like the year of 39. Anyways, 37. <laughs> okay, 37. We'll say 37 okay. for, for posterity's sake. Okay. Um, I don't think you so because you know what's crazy? Okay, this is crazy. So I have been... I have been a presence online since like 2016 when my first Conan clip went viral, mm -hmm. of course. And when your first clip goes viral, you're in the comments. You want to know what everyone is saying. Okay. You want to know no, everything you, you everybody's reading, saying. You're reading them. I don't often anymore because this is the thing. After almost 10 years of reading the comments, I now know all six reasons why people hate me. Okay. You know, like <laughs> yeah. that's the thing. Every, I know at least like, on the on the non conservative like the homophobia oh, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. conservative that doesn't stuff, count. like that doesn't like no. that bounces off me like whatever sure. who cares yeah, yeah, yeah. but like in terms of like gay people and normal mm -hmm. people like I know the six reasons why people hate me it everything they say always fits in one of those six lanes and so because of that. It's never new. It's never right. new. And it's not interest. It, it, it like truly has drained the interest from me to look at it anymore because I'm like, oh, none of these people are saying anything new, except the newest one is on some of my videos, I'm getting a lot of his plastic surgery looks crazy. He needs to fire his plastic surgeon. Why is he doing so much work to his face? <laughs> yes! He's fucking up his face. Why is he fucking up his face like that? Please slow down on the plastic surgery. Bitch, I haven't even gotten Botox <laughs> yeah. yet. I haven't even gotten Botox. Look at look at this. Look at this. That is like that, that what a veiled um what a what a what a um a compliment in the form of an it's insult. It's so weird. That's though. so that's I don't so know cunty. what I don't know what about my face is giving filler <laughs> or Botox or anything. Well, they're they're trying to come for you, but they're they're like throwing a jab, but they're secretly but like, it's also like, like like caressing your cheek. Yeah, it's like sorry, I look the same that <laughs> yeah, as I did yeah. ten years ago. Yeah, like yeah. not my bad. Sorry, I'm not, sorry, I'm but, not ugly. But you you ugly know what bitch. is crazy in L.A. is that like and I to full disclosure, I talk about this on stage right now. I have a whole bit about it, but like. Gen Z, I don't know if any, Which, if any of you are in the room. Quick, quick, she, that's a Gen Z. We also got a shout out to Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha. Gen Alpha. Um, but yeah. wait, can we clarify exactly which, what is the, the Gen Z cutoff? Because I always get confused. I believe I'm a millennial. Okay. So, so the oldest were, Gen Z. Gen Z was born in 1997. Is 27. 27, okay. Oh, shit. Yeah. They're not aging well. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really? They no, listen. Why is that? I love getting in. <laughs> I love getting in an argument with a Gen Z person because they always love to go back to my age. They always love to be like, "Oh, but Joel, you're like you're pushing forty. You're pushing forty. Like, why are you arguing with me? You're pushing forty. And it's uh -huh. like, yeah, bitch, I know. That's why I look like this. What's your excuse? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, and they. I read this article. It's because of the vaping, and it's because of the um all the TikTok skincare that they're doing, they're doing too, too much. much. And then here in mm. LA, I think there's a very specific problem that goes on where I'll get hit up on Grindr by someone who doesn't have their age listed. And I'm thinking 34, 35 tops. And then they come back with 24 because they're it's the steroids oh, and it's, and it's yep. the filler. Yep, yep, yep. And yep, between yep. the two, like when you give your face the look of plastic surgery, it, does, it can look good. 
But I just assume that you're at an age that you're getting plastic surgery. Sure. Now. Yeah, I I saw a clip of um was watching Drag Race in my sewing studio the other day, and then it ended, and then the show came on, and I'm like, what is it? It was Sylvester Stallone in this show called Tulsa, and I was like, this, this voice is like sounded like it was like this dude with a, a mouthful of marble speaking, and I look up and I'm like, huh? The f I mean. Sorry, I mean, I guess if we're making fun of stars, we have to say sorry. But whatever, you're, he's so rich and whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah, no, no, but it's just like that face, that dude is like 80. Uh, check his age. I There's think he's probably no 70. There's no way he has any idea you exist. Exactly, um, and he never will. And he never, and he will. never should, and he's better for it. But, whoa. I mean, men's, um, men's work in Hollywood is wacky. It is crazy. It's and, wacky. And it, in LA, the thing is, is here's people always love to talk about how LA has the hotter people than new than, than say New York. I think that is completely wrong. No, I don't. Completely yeah. wrong because I think that what really they're saying is there's one type of hot in LA that everybody wants to look like, mm. and in New York, there's a lot of different kinds. Of I hot agree. That you can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. I I thought. I've been of the opinion um, for a while now that I think in L, this is just a theory and it's probably wrong, but th there the, the the most attractive thing, the most attractive quality you could have is not necessarily hotness. It's novelty. Mm, it's yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. that you they haven't fucked you yet. Sure. So that's so you are Whoa. more attractive. And Do you like, know what I mean? No, absolutely. And I think too, like. LA is such a monkey's paw situation because in LA you can have sex with some of the hottest people you will ever meet and it will be so bad because they have never been given a note oh. in their entire oh, absolutely. lives. And absolutely. you are like, you are fucking an Adonis yeah. and you're like, no one has ever told yeah. you that this doesn't feel good. Yeah. Or that this kissing is a little bit strange oh yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. or that like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, would I, you rather if you had to have if you had to kiss somebody who is bad, a bad kisser? Which, by the way, I, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. So you go. You but here's go. the thing, though. There's only two people in a kiss. Mm -hmm. So, what is a bad kisser? No, I I'm not down with that. <laughs> No, Everybody, no, no, no. every there is a, an objective standard for what a good kiss is. I'm sorry, okay. there is. What is there it? is an objective standard for a good kiss. Okay. And if you had to have a bad kisser, would you rather have someone who gives you nothing? He's just, he's just doing this uh -huh. the whole time, or eat your face, or I fully. Would, eat your I face. would absolutely go for the face eat. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My eyes seem to the enthusiasm. Right. Yeah. At least that's passionate. Yes. At passionate. least you can interpret yeah. that as yeah. passion. Yep. The other one, I'm like, what are you hiding? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's the what the what's the there's nothing sexy about reticence because no. it, then it's like it gives a flavor of but like that is a common kissing technique that I experience in LA. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, like, yes. They give you they won't let you in. They <laughs> They will not let Why the right is, one yeah, in. So like, many walls up. It is so <laughs> crazy. Intimacy coach. They intimacy need an intimacy coach. coach. Yeah. I know. I had um. I had a very very satisfying sexual encounter with a guy, and in in somewhere in Europe on tour, and he almost at one point he like it got so intense the eating of the face like it was like almost like the the monster at the end of smile where uh -huh, like the mouth uh -huh. is just almost gonna like uh -huh. envelop my whole and he was like and, and it was really crazy but i loved it i see my <laughs> problem with it is mostly vanity because i do have adult acne and every i cannot get out of my head when someone's eating my face i'm like well, here comes the breakout. <laughs> oh, here comes the breakout. I was like, I don't know where that mouth has been. This is breakout I mean, city the mouth over is, here. The mouth is absolutely a sewer. Yeah. Oh, God. Especially if you go, like, if you're in these downtown raves with a dark room and they come out, you don't know where the mouth is. So, been. wait, are you, so are you kissing in a dark room? What's the laugh for? We're talking about gay stuff. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't respect our culture, then yeah, you yeah, need yeah, to leave. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get out. You need to go into a dark room. And, and no. you know, yeah. I mean, I guess I, I guess the kissing happens before you go in the dark room, and then once you're in the dark room, you're on to other things. Uh -huh. I think I have probably made out at least a little bit prior to like, you know, 
do m- engaging in other things. But I will say, and I'm sure you understand this now, it is no fun anymore to be in, in a, a public in a gay room. space. I have never. Really? No. I. I oh, what again? What? Um, I, I can't think. I have been. Um, I have been. There have been very few instances where I've been in a public sex scenario where there, there, there are more than three. I'm trying to think. Where there's more than three. I've like I've never been to an orgy. Okay. Oh, never really? been okay. to an orgy. I am too. Even in even in your most even when you were hanging with Tina. You uh, never no, went to an especially orgy. Especially not that. Because really? Yeah, because when you're dealing with drugs, and especially meth, you it, there's so you're you're opening up the door to so many outrageous variables. It's not worth it. I guess. It, because I will say my only experience with men who are um using tea is when I've seen it happen at an orgy. Uh-huh. Um and I've never never once it's so strange. It's not in my like in the like outer circles of my social circle, at least from what I know. Okay. And it's very possible that, that I just don't know about it and it's happening. I but, think it's that one yeah. because I've, what I've, what I've um, observed in LA at least, I mean, I don't know about everywhere else, but it's still like the drug that is very not admitted, not sure. talked about. Sure. People are totally fine and open about, like G, G-K, and K, Coke, Coke um, um, Molly, I mean, Molly, yeah, everything else. Um, I don't know what else there is. Uh, 2C, T- yeah. um, 2CB, anything like um, any kind of psychedelic, acid, mushrooms, yeah, yeah, yeah. et cetera. Et All cetera, that stuff is like, it's very, um, there is uh, no stigma at all to it. And, um, uh, there's, I will well, say, no, I have no a lot, I have a lot of friends who put G on the same level as T, which is crazy to me because I, I will self admit, like, I, I have not been drunk since 2022 mm. because I prefer G and I know the um, uh, thoughts how, and opinions on it. You. But the thing is, is I do think there's a lot of confirmation bias around G because the only people at the party that you know who are on G are the people who are violently falling out and ruining the party for everyone. Right. Meanwhile, you don't realize that 70% of us <laughs> right. are setting our timers and doing it responsibly. I've right. never fallen out. You right, know? right, right. And I'll, I'll tell you one other thing. I would much rather deal with a friend who's lightly falling out because they get a little sleepy uh-huh. than someone who's blackout fucking drunk trying to get them oh, out of the bar. I know. And then they're, they're yeah. And Pulling they, TVs off the wall. I know. Like, pissing themselves, it, shitting like, themselves. Truly, yeah. I had a friend who forgot which hotel, he's rich, forgot which hotel in New York he stayed it was staying at and and just checked into the standard because he couldn't remember how to get home Damn. like yeah i mean i think al- alcohol i I've, I've, th- that's my thing is like i get if you are going to be uh, a sort of a purist about substances uh-huh. then let's be let's be consistent yeah sure, it, sure, sure, sure sure and yeah, let's yeah. let's be real about yeah. like what we're dealing with here everybody should be doing it responsibly everybody should never be doing it alone mm. like Etc. I don't want to. I'm not advocating for anything, mm. but I'm just it saying. It really sounds like you are, though. Yeah, I'm I just know, kidding. But like, I'm just some kidding. of us, like, I'm if you're kidding. type A, like, <laughs> G is for spreadsheet people. G is not is for it, some uh, of, like, uh, it's not for some of these loosey goosey, like, right. girls who, like, because it is t- totally counterintuitive to every other substance you've ever done. If right. G is, you do it, I don't feel it. You wait an hour, you do it. I still don't feel it. Yeah. You wait an hour, you do it, suddenly you feel it. But right. with every other S substance, it's like, I don't feel it, let's do more. Right. You know? So and you can get in a lot of hot water really quick. Yeah, with you the have G. to trust the process. Mm-hmm. And that is the that yeah. is the thing. Yeah. Um what most I the 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 thing about G, my experience with G is that it's uh is that it's always in used in concert with T. Oh really? Yeah. Like the, every tweaker I've known um does them both interesting yeah because it's like the, the properties it's of a G downer and then aphrodisiac uh, yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. it's because obviously meth is the most potent stimulant you can put, get your hands on and then g the 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 counteracts it but they both synergistically create that aphrodisiac well, quality and the thing is is any drug user any casual drug user in la right now who is looking down on people who do meth i'm sorry we're all doing a little bit of meth <laughs> We're all doing a little bit of meth. I'm sorry. Look at the testing. Look at the testing on the Molly. Look at the testing on the Coke. Uh, look at the testing on any of the drugs you're doing. And none of it is pure. 
a lot of it has meth in it and and look at the if you just if you just uh google the most commonly prescribed um medications for children teenagers and adults i'm sure that um some version of amphetamine salts is probably uh-huh. around 20 to 30. oh yeah it's, it's top 20 to it's 30. a full-on shortage and my boyfriend who actually needs it mm. who who really really does i'm not like just i'm not one of those people who's like selling my boyfriend's adderall <laughs> like he, he really, really needs it so that i can get it to sell it <laughs> but no he actually he really does need it and yeah. it's in, in a way and it's like impossible for him to find it. it's, it's really wild. frustrating and the reason why there's this shortage is because everyone's afraid to do coke because of fentanyl when, and it's like one of those things where it's like oh we you've taken the wrong lesson <laughs> It's like, oh, we're too afraid to do coke because of fentanyl. Instead of not doing anything, <laughs> it's so crazy. That is so evil to me. It's crazy. That's that's the real horror movie happening. Is yeah. that is that that you go? You're at a party. You're wearing a leather jacket. You got mm. slicked back hair, and you're Ooh, 26. Danny. and you're really hot. Yeah. And then and then you go and like into the bathroom. Uh, you do a little bump and then you have you're having your little cocktail and all of a sudden boom you're dead yeah. fentanyl yeah that's, and that's so I, bad that's why I have truly naloxone in every room of my house <laughs> I don't know these bitches that are coming I, over. I don't know what if they've tested their shit. I don't I, know what dealers they're coming from. I like, know. I, and do, like, I do too. And I, the only just because because I've been to rehab and like a few times and there's like it's it's almost like salt and pepper at this point. Yeah. But, but every room's a kitchen, so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But it's like so it's so scary. No, it is. And I am like I'm so glad that like my partner my partner's six years younger than me. And he started partying way before I did. Like I started probably partying in the way that I party now around like 26, 27. He started when he That's was like That's a really 18. responsible age. Oh, well, because I was too oh. poor to afford to okay. do it the way I wanted. To but uh, you also raised really religious. And- Raise, well, yeah, but I moved out when I was 17. Oh, okay. So, so like whatever. I, you know, I've been on my own since I was 17. Okay. So it, it, that has nothing, very little to do with okay. it. In fact, if it had I had money at that point, I think my life would have gone a much different way. Gotcha. But like, gotcha. luckily I started doing it when I was like pretty, like had a good handle on myself and et cetera. And he started uh, when he was younger and we're reaching the end point i think together okay. yeah, yeah 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 like yeah, we yeah. we are both now sort of like we don't need to go to every party mm-hmm. like let's have a game night let's yeah. like you know it doesn't like i would much rather cuz the fact of the matter is with la is you are forced forced when you go to these parties to be surrounded by people who you who are horrible <laughs> and i resent i resent having to be surrounded by people who are horrible for the sake of being where in a downtown warehouse so I can have a little fun and dance to music that I like. Now you got to explain to me the appeal of this warehouse party. That's about 400 degrees, like the oven on broil and, and like packed like sardines with people who are, on the brink of unconsciousness. How many of these have you, many of you, have, have these have you been to? None, I will say, no. Okay. It's I, just, I, I get the reports after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them can be that way. Okay. A lot of them are the samey, 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 whatever. I'm usually parked outside, unless the DJ is someone that I really love, like Trixie Mattel. Yes. Oh my God. My well, I'll wait in line. Where's my yeah. camera? Trixie, yeah, right there. I, unless it's Trixie Mattel. <laughs> yeah. um, I You're won't, camped out. Um, you know, I like I love house music. I love disco house music, especially. So it has to be upbeat. Like, do not play me this Rainbow Road ass fucking uh, last lap music at the <laughs> end. That, what does that mean? It's what is just that like, mean? like like, like this mean? electronic music that is just like ah, you know, it's like pots and pans bullshit. Like <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Um. But um. <laughs> but I'm I'm always just outside. Okay. Um. Used to be vaping, now smoking. Yeah. Oh, we can talk about this. Let's talk about Let's it. Let's talk about I, it. Uh, um. So smoked for seven years. Smoked from the time I was um fifteen until the time I would. Oh no no no. F- smoked from the f- time I was uh, fifteen to the t- so eight years. I smoked from fifteen to twenty three. Okay. Um. Ended up in the um uh hosp- emergency room with pneumonia. Really really bad. Um, so you had decided to, to quit. Decided quit, quit 
cold turkey and honestly it was the easiest decision I've because ever of made. the illness partially because of the illness and partially because i was just at a point in my life where i was like you know what i'm done yeah um flash forward 10 full years i meet my boyfriend and it's post pandemic and i really do feel like pre-pandemic you weren't seeing vapes you would see jewels. You'd see jewels. But in the pr- in the amount that you now see vapes out and about, the disposable vapes. Diabolical. That was not a no, thing no. pre-pandemic. And now they're everywhere. And he got me into them. They, but they are truly everywhere. Everywhere. Every, your, every game. Your grandmother's vaping. Yeah. Your grim, like you go to an open casket funeral, that corpse I am is ingesting, vaping. I was, when I was vaping, ingesting, I'm sure, a hundred times more nicotine than I am smoking my three or four cigarettes a day now. Yeah. I swear to God. Now, the thing I want to, oh, ooh, I want to, um, you know how they make like the New York Times or whatever, they like, um correction from last week's article Mm -hmm. um uh blood is not blue (laughs) (laughs) also nicotine is not is not in it of itself that bad like yeah yeah. the, the chemical nicotine like nicotine is actually like stimulating um in f- yes. yes. Keep, keep going, keep going. Yeah, I, I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, it is all the other stuff in it. Yeah. And in fact, I think a lot, they some studies, because it's all fresh and new. Sure, sure. I think the chemicals in disposable vapes and vapes and stuff like that, it's a lateral move from smoking. And in, fi- yeah. and in fact, it might be worse because you are ingesting more than you would normally because it's all day, every day. You're inside, you're well, at the movie. Sure. The I, I'm frequency. on planes. The I'm frequency. on planes committing a felony. Yep. Blowing, blowing my vapor the, the into toilet. the fucking like <laughs> toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also that I can taste beach day. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Yeah, pink Skittles. Yeah, yeah. I get yeah 37 years old. Like, oh you my need to fucking suck your God. pink Skittle but I, vape. So I got my wisdom, te- my wisdom tooth out because I was only born with one. And... um I had the, to. I had. How is that process? Um, because I'm evolved. Because <laughs> I'm like nearly perfect. Whatever. Yeah. Now I'm perfect. So um, <laughs> had my my wisdom tooth out. Had to quit. My boyfriend and I were finally like, okay, this is it. We're gonna stop. <sighs> and then um, I did pretty well. We were doing the nicotine patches. He struggled a lot worse with it because I'm on a very high dose of Wellbutrin, um, which is a smoking cessation aid yeah. um, in general, anyways. And so I wasn't feeling as bad. Meanwhile, we go to Korea. Um, every moment I am not with him, I'm like, I'm going to go to 7-Eleven and get us some drinks. Do you want something? Smoking, 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 smoking. Thinking he doesn't know at all. Okay. Thinking he doesn't know at all. You can't hide cigarettes. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, and he hates it. Yeah. He hates it. He makes him <sighs> nauseous. The well, smell makes him nauseous. It's truly disgusting. It's, it is. For people who don't smoke. Except, except, okay, let's say this. Let's be real here about smoking for a second on this podcast because we don't talk about this. Smoking makes you look cool and sexy, okay? <laughs> and, it, and, and those two things yeah. alone, they offset the health <laughs> no. the issues I'm of it alone. I'm going to disagree with vaping, you there. Vaping makes you look like a fucking nerd. Yeah. Get out of the street with yeah. your Tamagotchi ass <laughs> yeah. vapor puffer it's like infantilizing it's so, yeah it, no, is, it looks so stupid it looks really weird i there the kind of vaping um i remember going to i went to treatment in arizona where people this was back in like this is almost 10 years ago they like no, not to, like six, seven years ago, they were doing carburetor vapes. Like, do you know the, the rigs? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, rigs yeah. they look literally look like it's yeah. like this oh, big. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. they're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then plumes, like enormous plumes of vape smoke, like like engulf the whole room. It's like it's wild. It's almost like yeah. competitive. It's like it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But I think you're right. The the, the little flume or the the colorful they have the um i think it's geek bar now has all the metrics on the side the little like screen it is a tamagotchi yeah it is it's it's very you look it's like a, toy. a fucking door you have like Put a girl's away. toy yeah. Put it yeah, away. yeah 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 like and i'm saying that now as a smoker because i <laughs> <laughs> because i don't want to see it anymore yeah. i don't want to see it i want to get started but on didn't it again they outlaw <clears throat> them 
Yeah, but the thing is, is no one's checking that. Nobody's shit. checking. No, and and if you go in and you don't look like a cop, oh, right. like I go in, I walk in in my crop top, and they're not. <laughs> yeah. They're, yeah. they're like, okay, here they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but, I mean, the you know what really rattled me though is that um, David Lynch, the director, announced that he has emphysema from years and years of smoking. Yeah, I think about yeah. that. I think about that a lot. It's sad um, that like that. I, I gave one myself person. asthma. I gave myself asthma Fuck. in my late teens early 20s because of it and it's oh. why i can't do cardio like oh, fuck at cardio. All i mean fuck yeah cardio. no it's just about lifting whatever yeah but like it's fine but yeah you know it is strange but so you've never done group sex no <laughs> My lovely conversation with Joel Kim Booster. Um, we went so long, so we get to split up this episode. See you next week for part two with Joel Kim Booster. Mm-hmm.